Hi my friends, this is Melanie with Melanie Smith Stamps and today we are playing with the Sealed 3D Botanical Collection. This collection is very interesting and very unique. It has these 3D emboss and cut folders that create these shaped embossed, 3D embossed center focals for your cards plus a little tag. So the way these work are they have three different areas and they have three dies that go with them and the dies actually stay in your embossing folder while you emboss. So we're actually going to do one so you can see it. Now, in my sample today we're going to be watercoloring our 3D embossing folder or our 3D embossed focal. So I went ahead and got a piece of Spellbinders watercolor card. Which, so let's go ahead and cut this down. I do have the new guillotine trimmer from Spellbinders here that I've just recently received. So we're going to go ahead and cut this down into four pieces. And we will go ahead and make this, let's see here. Um, make these A2 panels. And then we will emboss one of them. Now I'm trying this trimmer out for the first time. The first few times, you know, I just received it. So I'm trying it out. And I'm still not completely comfortable with it yet. So I will let you guys know how I like it as I use it. But for now, we're going to go ahead and just take this. And let's see here. I'm going to take those out because we're going to just do the large one. And this is a front of our embossing folder. I want my smooth side because I don't know if you realize this, but Spellbinders um, watercolor paper gives you options. You have a textured side and you have a smooth side. You can use either or. So I want my smooth side to be facing up. So that means towards the front of your folder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mist Missed my paper and go ahead and set that down in here. We'll go ahead and close that and then we will get our. Go ahead and get rid of those because I need my D plate. Because you need your D plate and your A plate, which is your base plate for your sandwich. For your Platinum 6. This cut and embossed at the same time. So here is our panel. Isn't that pretty? Really, really detailed. So I'm going to sit that to the side just for a second. And go ahead and put this away. This just notches right down in there. Okay, and while that piece is drying, I'll just show you these other pieces. That itself was the Floral For You embossing folder, the one with the butterflies. And it has a coordinating wax seal called Peony Butterfly. Now these wax seals are 3D wax seals. This is the first time we've had them. Let me show you what they look like. If you saw my wax seal video, you've seen them also, but they're very, very deep. And it's really great because when you're coloring them, you can color them without even touching the background. There's, it's a lot easier to color them. So this one is just a purple one. This one I had a little pink mixed in with my purple. And then this one is an inset one. And this is what my video is going to be about, where I have a wax seal inside a wax seal. 
So the first wax seal was the pink and blue, and then my frame was the second wax seal. And my video shows how to do that. This was the very first one I did. I did not have enough wax in it. And I just thought it was adorable the way it turned out though, even though it's totally not complete. I thought it was adorable. So I did not cut it up. I just thought it was a, so cute the way it still showed so much detail, even though it's really tiny. But these do take extra beads, five or six beads to be able to get your full oval. So this one here has a little pink and gold or like a bronze in it. And then this one is like a gold and a bronze. And then this is an inset one where it's one wax bead inside another. This one is gold and bronze, and then it has a bronze border. So if you can tell there, it's two different colors. This is darker than this. So I did this one first and I cut out, cut off the rim. And then I did this one and I set this piece down into this one when it was hot. And then I painted just the mushrooms. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, I do have a video that's coming that shows you how. So that is this forest mushroom, is that one. So you have the two 3Ds of seals, and then the coordinating mushroom embossing folder, the 3D and cut, is mushrooms for me to you, which is cute because it has the tag. So that's the second mushroom, and then you have, or the second embossing folder, then you have these three brand new frame sets. Fresh pick tags and labels, arches labels and tags, and scallop labels and tags. Each one has a tag in the center with a coordinating layer that goes on top of the tag, and then you have all of the concentric layers. And I'll be using these to here in upcoming videos on the items that are coming on the 20th. I'll be using these in my samples. And this one coordinates with the mushroom embossing folders. So that you'll be seeing in my samples today. And then for the butterfly, the butterfly coordinates with our essential oval or our essential arches. So you will see that also come to life today. So, okay, so this is pretty dry. So let me show you what we're gonna do with it. We are gonna get out some Tim Holtz watercolor pencils and we're gonna color our embossing folder our embossed image here. So let's see, what do we want? We'll want some pinks. So let's get some pinks here. Maybe this one. For the flower, we'll need some greenery. So we'll open this set to get the green out of. Oops. So we'll start with this light green. We always can go darker if we want to. So. Go ahead and get the green out. And then maybe, I know my other samples have purple in them. So let me look at my purples. What are my purple choices? They're in here. So let me see what colors I have here. Shaded lilac. I might sample some of these and see what these colors look like because I know the color I'm going after. Let me just get some scratch paper here. It's more of a bluish, like a periwinkle. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna look at my samples here on the side and coordinate as best I can, okay. I am going to go with that one. Alrighty, and that'll be our butterfly. 
Always thinking ahead with color combinations. So let's start with those. We can always make changes along the way. But we'll start with these. I'm going to put some water here on my desk. I always love just using the Mighty Mister. It just makes for cleanup a little easier. So I have my brush there. Now I'm just going to take my pencil and I am just going to color. I'm going to put a little bit of color. It's a little, still a little soft in here because of the water. Let me see if I can get some pigment down. Might need to go a little darker on my pink here. So let me see if we can get this pink. What is this pink? Let's go over here. I don't want to push super hard. I want to be able to get my pigment down by just scribbling real lightly so I don't push the embossing all down. You can run it back through the embossing folder to get your embossing back afterwards. But the first time I did this, I didn't have to do that because I just lightly scribbled like this. So that's what I'm wanting. So I think going with this darker color will just make it a little easier. So I'm just scribbling down some pigment like so. And this is completely dry, you know, pencil to paper. So I'm getting that down there. I'm not coloring the centers of the flowers because we'll color those a different color. Just going around and adding pigment to the petals here and there. Okay, so now let's get a little bit of water and let's just color over that real gently. so that you don't see your markings. You don't want to see your scribbles. So this is this is breaking up those scribble marks so that you just see the color on the raised areas. This just gives you some control over your coloring and where you want your coloring by having the pencil put the pigment down instead of having a super wet brush do it. You just have a little bit of water. You don't have a ton of water. And it's just a light coloring. Even though I went darker on the pink, it's still a light pink because you're not going heavy handed. It's just a soft, it's just a soft pink, you see, from the scribble here to the softness here. Now you can always go in once this is dry and add a little more in the center to give it some definition if you want to, or you can leave it super soft like that. But you see, this was too light. That pink was too light. So this pink is what I was going after. So we'll do this one again once I'm done with these. That gives that time to completely dry. But see how easy that is? Just another way, another technique to use on coloring your embossing folders. And I mean, this is something that is just super easy and it's very relaxing. So if you're wanting to just have something soothing to do while you're watching television, or you just need, you know, some downtime. Maybe you're going through some stress and you just need to just play some music and just, you know, escape a little bit. This is a perfect activity. Get back to your coloring. It's very therapeutic. I love finding different ways to color your embossing folders. And this is so detailed. It's great. 
So, okay, let's put, and this pink here is picked raspberry, if you're wondering. So this here, that actually went a little darker because it's, this paper is a little wet still, I think. So let's see. Um, that's the only reason I can think it would go darker. Okay, so we'll just put that on all those raised areas. And how about we go on up here and go ahead and work on this flower a little bit and get these pinks down. I don't want to get the leaves. I need to look at see where the leaves are. There's a leaf here, here, and there. So I can get this and this, but not. that one. It's kind of hard to tell what's a leaf and what isn't. Especially under these bright lights that I'm under. But it's okay. Whatever you make green is going to be your leaf. I just love how freeing this is. Quick, it's easy. You really don't have to think about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead in here, get me some water, and go down here. This might take a little more work. I'm wondering why this is acting different down here. For some reason, this is acting different. So I'm going to add a little extra water down here to get this to dissolve. It's actually kind of pretty the way the darker pink went on over the lighter pink. Okay, before I move up there to the top, I'm just going to add the little striations in here. Just some of those extra darker areas. Because I really like the way it looks down here. And then I'm just going to mute those out a little bit. Soften those kind of blend them in there so it looks like it's part of the flower. Those little dark crevices. Okay. We'll put a little bit down in this one and some of these crevices. Not too much, just a little bit just to give it some color variations. Okay. Oh, I like the way that looks right there. All right, then we'll work on this big one. As you work this larger area, just move along with the water that's on your brush until you can tell the, the, the pigment just isn't moving any longer and then dip your brush into more water and just keep going. You're doing the same thing over and over again so I will morph you a little bit. Okay. Now, some of these areas didn't quite get the color that I needed. So I'm gonna just go in here with a little bit more color. And of course, when it goes in and the paper's wet, it gets quite dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use this as getting my, my 
extra shadows while I'm at it. Go ahead and use that there. Just get some extra in these dark ridges. We got some deep ones back there. Just not going to do a ton of them, but just a few. And you can work at this as much as you want. And of course, the more water you add, the more dilution you get. So you can keep working at it until you like it. There we go. Okay, so our flowers are done for the most part, I think. Oh, I see one I forgot. Get the, that one. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our green. And we'll go ahead and color these leaves and stems. Of course, you want to be careful on these really narrow ones. Try to stick with it just, just the um, the parts that are raised. go. Now let's go ahead and water these down. Make sure there's no pink in my brush. I'm using such little water that I'm not really getting color in my brush too badly. So now I'm just going over that and spreading that green around on those or raised areas. So we don't have any of those striation marks from coloring. Quick and simple. And I do have a little bit right there out into the background. So I'm going to grab a tiny bit of paper towel and I soaked that right up. I had a little tiny puddle in the background. So I soaked that right up and grabbed it while it was still wet so I was able to get it out of the background. Another beauty of using watercolor paper and using a good quality watercolor paper is you can fix your boo-boos if you catch them in time. Almost done. Alrighty, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry and let's think about the centers. So, how about we take a bright yellow and we do some coloring in here on these raised areas. Pretty simple, huh? There we go. That was mustard seed. 
rub my brush again, make sure there's no pink in there or green. And then, though that green is quite yellowy, so it probably wouldn't have mattered a whole lot. And I'm just going to touch over that just a tiny bit. And there we go. All right, and then we have the butterflies, and we picked this purple, and I picked it out specifically because it'll match my other cards. So I'm going to add this purple to our butterfly. And I'm just going super light because this is a darker color. And I'm just dusting it over the wings. I'm not touching the bodies though. Might do those gray. Okay. Oh, we missed a we missed a, a leaf right there. Alrighty. So let's see how this purple looks. Not as dark as I thought it was going to be because I went real soft. Like I said, you can always add more, but you can't take it away because that looks the same as the pink. So we'll definitely need to add a little more to that, but that's okay. That's pretty. All right, I think before doing this one, let me add a little darker here and see how this turns out. I do darker there and there and see what how that, that one turns out. Just going a little deeper. That's more of the color. There we go. Trying to go a little lighter on the ends. Remember you can always add more water to get your color lighter. You can also come to your pencil and get a little pigment like that and come in and make it darker. That actually is what I'm going to do here, I think. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that'll work. Get a little extra water there. Look how deep that pigment is there. Wow. Because I didn't have so much water over here. Okay, let's get some water. We're going to have to dilute this out a little bit. But we can pull it out and lighten it up. And now we can tell a difference from this butterfly over here and these flowers, can't we? That is definitely getting to the color I was after. Just by picking up the raw pigment from 
the pencil itself and going straight to the butterfly. Now I'm going to drag this out so we can blend to the tips like so. So it doesn't look like it's just gotten light all of a sudden. <laughs> There we go. And we'll do the same over here. Want it to look more natural. Okay, let's see how that looks. I'm going to take a little bit of this or some water here. Okay, dry my brush a little bit and just drag that out a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, then the only other thing I'm going to do is use a tiny bit of gray for the bodies. Let's see. Flickery smoke. There's no purple in here. And let's see. Let's use a tiny bit of water. And I just want a hint of gray on there for the body. There we go. Didn't like the way that antenna went, so I'm getting cleaning that one up because I didn't like the way it looked. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of gray off of that and see if I can just come in and add it myself. just wanted it lightly. I didn't want it hard just to highlight it. So there you go. Now I might come in with a light blue and do all of the background. But let me show you where I'm going with this because I have the actual rest of the card right here. This was my first one. And you see I did the light blue on this one. So let me show you, I didn't rush with this one as much as I did this one. So let me show you where I'm going with this, since this one's dry. We're going to hook that onto a silver card. And then I've made this better press background just in a pale pink. And we're gonna put that right there to finish our card. Super simple. Okay. Now, let me show you my bonus cards real quick. This is a second card using that same technique. And I did the sentiment that goes with this background is what I used right here. I'll make sure to link this background. I don't know what the name is that off the top of my head, but I'll link it um, down below just in case you're interested in it. It does go on sale from time to time now. So if you like the look of this, I'll link it down below. But this one and the die for this comes with this background. So that is my second card. Then we have that one. Then we have 
this one here with my wax seal one of my wax seals that's an inlay wax seal or dual wax seal and then my favorite one is this one I did an ombre before I actually embossed that and then I did this inlaid wax seal and then I used those new layering dies that coordinate and then I added a sealed twig here from one of the sealed collections that are older and a um, better press sentiment that's been glimmered that was in my stash. So it's been glimmered in gold to coordinate with the gold here and I added a little gold coloring there. So those are my four cards with this collection plus all my extras here and I have thoroughly, my camera is totally not straight, there we go, <laughs> but I have thoroughly enjoyed this collection. I love these embossing folders and the sky is the limit with what we can do with this. This was just one technique, coloring with your colored pencils, your watercolor pencils. And I hope I can edit this down so it's not 45 minutes long for you. That's what it's showing me right now. But hopefully I can get that edited down for you so you're not here all day. I do appreciate your time and that you choose to spend it with me. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.